In 1963, the university purchased a 202-acre parcel of land from insurance broker E.L. McLean. Part of this property included the former summer home of Miller Lash, owner of the Brazilian Traction Light and Power Company. Built in 1913, this arts and crafts style house was complete with 17 rooms, a barn, and coach house. When the college acquired it, it actually started out as the principal's residence. And then over the years, it, people began to realize that it wasn't the most practical place to live. Uh, so it hasn't been used as a principal's residence since the uh, 1970s. However, it has become an enormous asset uh, as a conference center. Uh, it's very popular as a place for wedding receptions, uh, and it's a, uh, a wonderful asset uh, for the university. Within this scenic area, the university wanted to build a new facility that would be different from the traditional design of university campuses. Selected to take on this challenge was Australian-born architect John Andrews. Just 31 at the time, Andrews had been a finalist in the competition for the design of Toronto's new City Hall. He was chairman of the University of Toronto's architecture program and owner of his own firm. Andrews worked in close association with two members of the Toronto School of Architecture, planner Michael Hugo Brunt and landscape architect Michael Huff. They came up with a groundbreaking design in the brutalist style, a trend that was in vogue during the 1960s and 70s. Brutalism really came about through three forces, uh, influences from Japanese metabolism, Russian constructivism, and particularly the new brutalism that evolved in England after World War II. These things came together in a very unique way in John Andrews' work. And uh, he, he, he was engaged in a kind of anthropological uh, aestheticism, which for him placed an emphasis on people. Sod turning for Scarborough College took place in May 1964. Soon after, newspapers discussed the bold new design as it emerged from the landscape. One paper even said that it resembled a Mayan temple. During the rushed two-year construction, students first began classes at U of T's old biology building downtown. Finally, Scarborough College opened in January 1966 with a delayed grand opening in October attended by then Premier, the Honorable William Davis. The college was actually one massive structure divided into two wings, the Arts Wing, now known as the Humanities Wing, and the Science Wing. This building at the time was really, I think, a shock. It was a jolt for Toronto. Uh, a megastructure like this, made of reinforced concrete at this scale, simply had not happened. Uh, people were intrigued, some loved it, some hated it, but the world came to see it. Architectural critics, architecture students from all over the world came to see Scarborough College. The design for Scarborough College even made it to the January 13, 1967 issue of the Canadian edition of Time magazine. Next, we'll find out what students thought of their new home.